he is the father of the prophets. Ibrahim alayhi salam is Abu al-Anbiya. And our scholars say that one of the reasons he is called Abu al-Anbiya is because most of the generations of prophets that came after him, or all of them even, some of them say all came from his lineage after him. Ibrahim alayhi salam had Ishaq and Ismail alayhi salam. And from them came children who all the other prophets that came after them were a result of his two children. He is also Khalilul Rahman or Khalilullah, the special friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this title was given to only Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam was a special prophet. He is an amazing messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is one of the messengers who was sent not only to his people, but even to his own father. He was born in Iraq. He was born in Babylon, Babel. And at that time, there was a king known as Nimrud. This king was a very, very powerful king. Allah had given him a lot of power and authority. Abraham, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He is such a great man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him. Not once, not twice, but again and again. And he passed every single test. At that time, the people were worshipping idols and they were worshipping wealth. And he was born as he grew up. He's seen his father. His father, the Quran says his name was Azar. So we will use that particular name. Azar, the father of Abraham. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how Azar used to make idols and sell them. So the young boy, he was watching his father carving idols out of wood and stone. And then he would see his father selling them. Then he would notice people prostrate to these things that his own father was carving. And he would notice people asking these stones and these pieces of wood to give them good health and to grant them long lives and to give them sustenance and to guide them and so on. So he was shocked. One day he seen this big idol and he tells his father, Oh my father, what is this? He says, these are idols. So it has such a big ear. He says, yes, this is because it hears everything. Look at how foolish they were. Yet they had brains. The young boy, he started asking his father and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this boy, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam in 73 different places in the Quran. And in 25 different surahs of the Quran, one of those surahs named after him, Surah Ibrahim. Allah says, and indeed we had given Ibrahim a long time ago guidance from a very early age. Allah says, remember when Ibrahim asked his father and his nation, his people, meaning his father's people, what is this that you are worshipping? They said, straight answer, straightforward. They said, we are worshipping idols and we will continue worshipping these idols. You see, these things that you people are worshipping, you and your forefathers that you have been worshipping all along, all of these things that you've been worshipping for so many years, they are all, including yourselves, enemies of mine. There is only one that I worship and that is Rabbul Alameen. The Lord of all the worlds, the creator, whoever made everything here, that is whom I worship. So from a very young age, he understood that I cannot worship a stone or a stick or a piece of wood or anything. I need to only worship whoever made me. That's it. When he told his father, oh, my father, knowledge has come to me that did not come to you. So follow me, I will show you the right path. I'll show you the guidance. And he's a young boy saying this. He said, oh my father, look, let me tell you common sense. And I want to talk to you. I want to discuss and debate with you. Tell me, what is the answer? The father also said, look, don't question. I don't want any questions. We've been following our forefathers. And the biggest problem is I'm making money out of this. How can you tell me to stop it? Come on. Azar, he failed his test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mercy on him at that stage by sending his own son 
to come to him and say, My father, how can you worship something you're making with your own hands? Come on, come on. And the father says, No, keep quiet. And the people said, No, keep quiet. Allahu Akbar. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam continues. He says, Oh my father, don't worship the devil. Now you're falling into the trap of the devil. And he says, Oh my father, don't worship the devil. Indeed, the devil was very, very far from the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The devil transgressed against the command of Allah, of the most merciful. Oh my father, I have a very big fear for you that the most merciful might punish you. Look at the words he's using. When someone associates a partnership with Allah, the most merciful says that is the time when he punishes. Now he was alone. Nobody listened to him. Not one. Not even one. Allahu Akbar. At that stage, no one. So what happened? After some time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam continued with them to remind them that whoever created the skies and the earth and whoever made us, that is whom you are supposed to be worshipping. These stones and these idols have not made anyone. He says, he says, your Rabb is the Rabb, the creator of the skies and the earth. Whoever made everything in existence is your Rabb. So Ibrahim alayhi salam says, وَتَاللَّهِ لَأَكِيدَنَّ أَصْنَامَكُمْ بَعْدَ أَن تُوَلُّوا مُدْبِرِينَ he says to himself, Wallahi, I am going to destroy these idols. I'm going to plan and plot against them. Once these people are gone, I will plot against the idols. So what happened? Some people heard him making mention of these idols. A few people heard him making mention of the fact that he wants to plan something. He wants to do something. So they used to have their day in a week when they used to go out, everybody and pray. They used to take their gods along. And they used to go and the father had a warehouse what we call a warehouse where all the gods that were not yet sold were there so Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam when they told him let's go we want to go and pray he says Inni saqeem. I am sick he says what I'm sick now he was not physically ill but what he meant is I'm sick of what you people are doing. I'm not coming with you. So he just said, I'm sick. He didn't finish the sentence, obviously. He says, I'm sick and I'm not coming with you. So they went away. When they all went, he now decided to open this door. He went into the room. He looks at all his idols and he says, yes, talk to me. Talk to me. So naturally, there was no answer. That is by nature. <laughs> it's a stone. It's a stick. So he says, What's wrong with you? You're not talking to me. He gave them a chance to talk. He started hitting them and destroying them one by one. And he's asking them questions as he's destroying them. What are you going to do? Can you help yourself? You can't help yourself. You can't help anyone else. Here you are, one gone. Two gone, three gone, the whole lot of them gone. But that one with big ears, he left it. Why did he leave it? Because he was very intelligent, extremely intelligent. He hung the axe on its ear, <laughs> on the ear. And he went away. And he went back to sleep. Now when they came back, they noticed that all these idols are broken. Who did this to our gods? Indeed, he is very, very wrong. He's from amongst the oppressors. We heard someone called Ibrahim mention them. So they, they asked Ibrahim, they called him. They said, oh Ibrahim, who did this to our gods? So he looked at them. He looks at the gods. And he says, this big one here, you ask him, maybe he might know what happened. See, does he talk? So what happened? Immediately they felt within themselves that we are wrong. And, and they said, no, 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 no. This young boy is wrong. He is guilty. So what did they do? They decided we need to punish him. 
they had their meetings they arrested him they chained him up and they said you know what burn him to death to set an example so nobody must do this again no one and Ibrahim alayhi salam is one alone but his belief in his maker was solid he says oh my creator you are enough for me as a protector whoever made me protect me no one else that was his dua Ibrahim alayhi salam so his father tells him you better keep quiet my son and they prepared a fire and one narration says it took them a long time to prepare that fire they then got Ibrahim alayhi salam he was all tied up in ropes and chains and they put him into a catapult why because they couldn't throw him into there getting close to it would burn them as well and they released the catapult as he was being thrown he made a dua what was this dua one dua enough allah is enough for me and he is the best disposer of affairs ya allah you are enough for me you alone protect me look what they're doing you made me you can help you can hear these idols cannot you can see these idols cannot you are in control these idols cannot ya allah i am at your protection I am under your protection. So as he was released, there were stairs created. So he was literally coming down in such a beautiful way into the fire. And these people are looking at him. And as he went in, Allah says, Ya naru kuni barda wa salaman ala Ibrahim. We said, O oh fire, become cold and be a means of peace to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. Everybody is watching. Nobody said magician. Nobody said because they were shocked. And then he walks out of that fire very calmly. As he walks out, they're just shocked looking at him. They don't know. So one young man gets up and he decides, I want to follow you. You are right. These people are wrong. Allahu Akbar. Young man. Who was this young man? His nephew. Lut alayhi salatu wassalam. The nephew of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. 